they're crowded here. Yeah, I finally have my workstation run out of this space. Yeah, it's really annoying when that happens. Um, but you know, that's life. So anyway, in this video I'm going to go through how you um, check through your machine, find out all the information about the existing storage, and then um, decide on upgrade options, and then actually perform the upgrade. So it'll be a little bit orientated towards my situation, of course, but I think you can adapt it to pretty much many of the more, more common systems out there. So the first thing you need to do is to take just take File Explorer and then um, select this PC and then just um, yeah I suggest you just shrink everything that's nothing to do with your um, disk drives and then you can actually see that you have that I have two disk drives of a C drive which is the system drive and the D drive and you might be wondering why am I saying I'm out of disk space since I got so much free here but I spent quite a lot of time trying to move data files away from this disk and um, uh, basically my idea was to um, back up the system drive C and then um, replace it with a larger one and then restore the backup but that's not going to actually work I'll go into that um, a little bit later why that's not possible but as you see that here here you can see that now I have um, that I have two drives you might have like only one like a C drive or you might have even more uh, the problem is that when you look at it from this perspective, it doesn't actually tell you how many physical disks you have. So you, we're going to have to do a bit, a little bit more research to find out the physical disk situation. So anyway, the best tool I think for finding out the physical disk layout um, uh, is um, disk manager management, and, and you can find this if you use the search in, in Windows 10. So you don't actually have to know where, where this is stored. So just search for disk management. Anyway, when you start this, then it shows you actually it shows you that, okay, you have a disk. I have a disk zero, and I have a disk one, and it tells you what the capacities are, and then it gives you the layout here, partition layout. So this could be the situation where you're actually writing two disk drives off of one physical drive. But here we can see that I actually do have two physical drives. Now the issue here is that you actually don't know how these see how these are connected and what interface these are physically connected to so then we need to do some more research to find that out. So the best way to find out how um, your disks of uh, drives are physically connected to the computer is to um, go into some, uh, something called device manager and then you need to uh, uh, select the option device by connection and then you can just uh, you can use the same path it's probably it will be in the same path, pretty much. And then when you um, go through this PCI, PCI bridge, then you will see the, um, like uh, in the case of this case, in my case, you have the standard SATA uh, HCI controller. And then you can see two, um, two disk drives. And it will actually tell you what they are also more physically. You can see that I have one SSD and uh, one normal um, hard drive. And, and it tells you also that this is a standard SATA uh, connector. So now, you know even that I, so now I know actually even without looking in the computer, I know that I have two, disk drive, two physical disk drives. One is an SSD, one is a physical hard drive. And they're both um, connected through SATA, a standard SATA um, control. So anyway, what kind of connections do you have available in the computer if you're going to think about upgrading? I mean, now we know we have two disks, and we know their sizes, and we know their types. And now we have, like, you have to think through, okay, w what's your need for the future? You know, how much more space do you need? And um, to be able to make the final decision, you need to actually um, go in and, and um, see what um, your motherboard actually provides in terms of interfaces. And um, you, can, you will find the appropriate section. So here we go. Since I actually have the motherboard manual for the motherboard that I'm using, you can actually find that um, uh, quite easily. I actually, show that also. So I just jumped into CPU Zeta, which is a utility you can freely download from the internet. And it actually has this is 
ah, one of the easiest tools where you can find because it actually has a mainboard section and it will tell you uh, it'll read out the manufacturer model number of the uh, motherboard you have. Of course, if you have an OEM PC, then this will be uh, indicative. In anyway, back to the motherboard manual. Um, so anyway, as we see here, we have an M.2 M socket. And then we um, also have a, the serial of the 6 megabit gigabit um, connection 7 pin so that they are number 7 and number 8 and then you can have a look up here and then we see the number 7 aha so this the end of two slot is here and then the SATA connections they're a bit they're a bit divided around the motherboard you have uh, a pair a pair here a pair here and a pair here so that's actually so now we know uh, where our connections are and then I would just like to go into one, one detail when it says that you have an M.2 socket. So we should actually go and have a look at the details of that. Well, it was a good thing I had a look, but <laughs> actually it does, I didn't remember, it actually does have two M.2 sockets. So there's actually one here and one here. So that was a, that was a good check. And then we need to go to the details I was talking about. Because this is rather important. Let's see if we can find it. Oh, here we go. And the two sockets. So those were the two sockets that are on the motherboard, and they're actually more clearly indicated in this section. Uh, but there's a little bit different variation in uh, in in support for um, uh, the uh, M.2 drives types. It's also key to um, that what that on, depending on what processor you have, then um, it supports different operational modes. Either, so either pure SATA mode or PCI, PCE uh, mode. So that will affect the speed that you'll get. And um, it's also important to. Um, actually check uh, that you buy the correct you check that the when you buy the M M.2 drive that it actually follows one of these types that are marked here with these um, digits so if you buy something outside of those outside of those model number or type numbers then um, it probably won't work so anyway we've done all that work found out what what we have in terms of existing um, uh, storage devices and then we have to decide how much do we need one want to have more storage and then one has to decide on also to um, check uh, what um, options we have to install the, um, the disks in the case um, of course arguably if you if you use a um, flash drive you know SSD, then you can just throw it in there and put it and tape it on wherever. But but it's still it's nice to have a place. But if you're going to have physical drives, then it's actually important to have um, proper place places to put things. So I'm using this case, the Dynamic Reality, and um, then you actually have a it, it actually includes a drive, a hard drive bay, and also you can install hard drives on the, um, the back. Yeah on the back side where it has this cable ha holder um, support um, B so you can put actually two to um, one SSD and uh, one hard drive and then it has this hard drive bay which is accessible through a th thumb screw through the back so you can install discs in there yeah and then if you um, are going to replace the system drive actually like to take a backup with Windows 10 actually does have backup tools but they're the ones you should use are the Windows 7 backup tools so they're they're hidden a bit so um, you, go, you have to go to system and then you go to storage and then you have more storage settings
few backup options. I mean, why the, they ever made this menu system in Windows 10, I don't know. Anyway, I don't care about this, the default Windows 10. You can go to this one here, which is to go to the backup and recovery Windows 10 option. And that brings you the Windows 7 uh, uh, classic interface here. So uh, the benefit of this environment is you can actually t tell it to back up both your data files and it can take a disk image. And the disk image can be either, either stored on an external hard drive or to a network um, the network drive you have. Now the only problem that I'm having is with this is that since I've actually been installing programs on both C and both drives, um, this um, backup mechanism thinks that I actually have to, it, it combines the system drives and it wants to take an I if if I say take an image, it won't take an image only of the C drive, It'll, it wants to take an image on both my drives. So I get a quite a big um, yeah, two, two terabyte backup file. <laughs> but anyway, I, I ran that through. So. But uh, originally, I'm, that was why I emptied stuff from the C drive, or temporarily moved files off the C drive, because I wanted to actually just back up what was left on the C drive uh, and call it uh, into an image and then uh, install a new C drive and restore it. But now, since I've actually been installing, due to lack of space, I've been installing apps on on, on, on two drives and it doesn't allow me to do that. So I'm actually going to, uh, my solution is going to be I'm going to make a clean install uh, once I install the new drives. Oh wait, it doesn't, XSplit's not showing a window, I'm sorry. Switch. That's my um, because it actually does turn up to be a different window. But so sorry about that. <laughs> so you'll you'll end up in this in this window, and then you can actually configure the backup, and, and then you can force it to take it now, or you can schedule it, and that will, that will take a, both an image and a backup of your data files prior to launching into into upgrading. So anyway, we're that far, so then basically you need to decide on okay, what, what storage are you going to add to your computer. And as you noticed, I don't have any um, M.2 drives, so I think I'm going to go that route. So it will be an M.2 drive, and then, um, uh, so basically you can, you can choose between solid state storage, which is additional SATA SSDs, or um, an M.2 drive, so if you have M.2 uh, slots. Uh, and then you can go for conventional mechanical drives, SATA drives. And, you know, a little bit of wording on criteria. Uh, you know, the market changes all the time. Um, so, you know, so what I'm saying now applies today. Uh, you know, you probably won't do tomorrow because the issue with value and uh, capacities get larger. But anyway, you should decide on what capacity you want. I mean, it, if you're going to upgrade the storage capacity, don't don't half do it. So I'm going to practically speaking um, more than double the um, storage capacity I am currently having after I've gone through this process. And then you need to think about speed and not not only speed in terms of, um, of, of a, from a one angle you need to actually think about okay, how you're going to actually use it. Um, you know, do you need continuous streaming speed or do you need spurt speed? Are you going to be handling mostly small files or large files or a combination of both? And then you might want to think reliability. You know, you know how do you want to buy main brand, known reliable stuff, or can you get away with some cheaper crap? You don't really care about price. You know how much money you have. <laughs> the sky's the limit, like everything else. Yeah, future needs uh, might impact the choice of selection. And then 24-7 usage, I mean, is it going to be running 24-7? Do you want to get NAS, NAS compatible units? Um, so anyway, I went the relatively simple route. So, let's see that I have to it around. So I went for this drive. When I bought it, it was a good choice. 
Uh, this is not. This is only a two terabytes. So of course, you can get three, six, whatever. But the, the, this is a special drive in, in terms that it actually contains quite a lot of cache. So this is a true mechanical for 7,400 RPM drive with, with a very large cache, an exceptionally large cache. So that's why I actually picked it up because I want to have a mechanical drive. It's nice to have that cache. And um, then, I, as I said, that I'll be going to end up two root so I picked up one of these so it's just a pretty standard um, Kingston and up to SSD drive one terabyte so with this I'll be adding uh, re-equipping this the machine actually with um, three three terabytes of storage space and then I'll be adding the old drives also so there'll be like extra data storage so this is this is going to be the new system drive put Windows on, I have to install Windows from scratch, and then all the applications and then the mechanical drives will be more. And then the old SSD I have in the computer will become uh, an actual install drive for um, applications that I want to load fast. So that would be like flight, uh, Microsoft Flight Simulator. <laughs> So anyway, the next phase is I'm basically going to, um, yeah, if I put it simply, I'm going to remove the existing storage. I'm going to put it in the new storage. And then I'm going to just install Windows and get it up and running. And then I'm going to um, put back the um, old storage as extra drives. And um, yeah, let's get into it. So anyway, this is the M.2 slot that I'm going to try and use. And um, needs these kind of standoffs. So don't try and um, screw it flat against the, those ones. This motherboard you need to put in these the standoffs. So I'm going to uh, open up that and then try and get one of these standoffs into place. Hope the whole computer doesn't fall off the tape. So that slots in there and that sits down there. And it needs to be screwed on with that screw. <laughs> I don't even see it. Oh, I don't know. So I'm going to go offline for a little while to get that little into place. So, it's got it fixed but I had to do this kind of trick. I had to take the little little screw on that end, try and get it and then get it into place. But now I think it's in its place, I'm well socketed in. Well, I suppose that's now done. So the M.2 drive is in. So, as I said before, now we um, Whoa! That dropped down a drain, but thankfully the drain doesn't have any water in it. So, those are, didn't remember they were so short. <laughs> Look at that. So I hardly got any threads. Oh, come on, don't roll off. So, ah, that's the, um, lead controller, I don't remember what that was there. Oh, just hang there and I hope that the wire 
house won't come out. Okay, because as I said, we need to take out the existing storage. A little storage bay. Disconnect power, say that. Power, say that. Oops, where did it go? Let's lose it. That's close to it. And these can just slot it out. I'm just going to get to work and um, replace this with the data drive, a new one. Uh, no, sorry, I think uh, this I'm going to keep on the tray because I'm going to replace this one. I'm going to move to here and then um, this one will have the other big hard drive on it. Yeah, that's the way I thought to do. So, I'm going to start fiddling with that. So, got them on the tray. Oh. So, I can see a bit. So, I've plugged in the SATA cables. Try and uh, figure out the power situation. the same cable because the other one I'm using is Molex connector for fans or something I was using this for. Yes, because it's feeding the power for the LED, so I have to figure that out somehow. This might be a bit tricky to get plugged in. Yeah, I have to think about how to get the power for this one. SATA cables are really not a problem, those I have lots of. Oh, look at 
that's not going to be long enough, is it? So anyway, that'll, so the only investigation I have now is to figure out how to get the power to this. Because I'm actually out of... Oh, I actually have... Do I have still one free salt? Ah, maybe I'm saved. Looks like I actually have one slot for Because this is a modular power surprise. So I just need to find the cables. So got the um found the cables. So I have one power cable and then um I say the cable. So I'm just gonna get this one here. Mounted. Oh, I can't pull it up high enough. There. I need to mount it on there. And then get it fiddled into place. Oh well. That was a bit of a struggle, but it's at least in. It wasn't easy to get the power connector in because it was in the wrong direction. I loosened up the screws enough to get it in place. So, in theory, we have now. The new discs in and the old discs are physically in place and then I have to connect the SATA cable for the old boot drive in place and then we can try and give it a boot. And then we should basically it should boot from the old um, boot drive. This has no other boot drive right now. And then I will do the setup on the operating system just to wrap this up. But I won't be filming the installation of the operating system, that's too many videos of those I, I, I actually have in my uh, workstation build also showing how to install Windows 10, so no big deal. Anyway, let's get the boot drive connected and see what happens. So, let's get the power connected and see if it starts. It's, okay, it's booting on the other one. I'm sorry. <laughs> Keep the camera on this one. I have two monitors, so it's actually booting on the other one. Well, at least it's showing some kind of light. Of course, it's a new start. So. Okay, now it's getting back to I just want to see the. But anyway, it's booting off the original system right now, so I'm going to have to actually do that. Or we should actually probably, if I get into, yeah, Windows starts. So I could at least check if the drives are uh, alive. So what should I have now? I should have four drives, at least in theory. So let's see if that's the case. No, they're not formatted, so let's not panic. Uh, two of them are not formatted, so I actually need to go to this kind of
Okay, I suppose it's not impossible to see in the camp, but I, here I actually have. Well, actually, if I expand this thing, you can see it. So, yep, it looks like I have four physical hard drives. So, of course, they're in a little bit different order, but that one shouldn't really care about it. it actually, the system figures that out for itself. So, so here's my old boot disk, and it's booted from here, and it's still drive C. It hasn't done. Um, lost the identification and here's my old D drive and that's up and running and healthy. Do a quick check. Yeah. And then there's two empty drives and they haven't been um, partitioned yet or formatted. But it's the evening here, it's nearly um, 12 o'clock at night. Okay, but here's the two uh, terabyte drive, and here's the one. So this is my new system drive, is this one, and then that's the new day. So anyway, so my next thing will be to is to um, install um, Windows 10 on this drive instead. So then I get a clean, nah, it needs a clean install in this. So I'll do that and, um, yeah, and then finalize the video. That's probably it. So if one gets this far, then basically, or physically, the whole thing's in place almost. Maybe. And then it's just a matter of installation and configuration. Uh, like 24 hours now, it's been running. I've been um, copying files and stuff, reorganizing, so um, everything's been working fine. And um, as you see now, I have this kind of disk layout. So I have the four disks all in operation. St uh, this one is not really, that hasn't got that much stuff on it. Uh, but it's a cool 5 terabytes of um, storage space, I think that'll last me for a while. And then I'll flow the critical stuff to the network drives. Um, I would s and then I th after I reorganized a bit and, and thought through it, I decided not to reinstall the operating system. I, I, I don't know, I kind of felt I wouldn't get really that much benefit from it, because I'll probably be putting um, applications on another drive anyway. So. But anyway, the well concluded um, working solution. Um, so if you like this one, um, consider subscribing, hit the bell icon for more, uh, so you get notified of additional videos. And um, if somebody else is in the process of thinking about upgrades and might want to watch this video, get some hints. And um, I'll see you in the next one. <laughs>